gentlemen and boys and girls. I hope we have plenty of people today that are watching us. Uh, we've now passed through Christmas and uh, we're kind of uh, looking back now about what we've been through and about what Christmas means. And so um, uh, this morning, I hope all of you were able to watch the message about uh, what do we do now that, uh, that Christmas has passed. And so uh, tonight I want to do a little bit of a message, but we're going to kind of uh, use the same format that we have just a little bit. It's not going to be exactly the same, but that we've been doing on Wednesday nights. But I wanted to do something that uh, is upbeat and lively a little bit, where when I say lively, that is upbeat enough for us to keep our mind on things above and not on things below. Um, it's real easy, uh, our, our list of people that are sick and struggling are, are growing all the time. And um, there's a lot of people that are really struggling with depression right now and everything through these holidays. And I certainly want us to be mindful and um, remember those folks that are struggling. Um, I got a call today uh, or just the other day that we need to continue to remember Barry Bunning. Barry's not feeling very well. And so, uh, and several of the people at his office are not feeling well. So we certainly want to uh, remember them. Uh, I think he has, uh, by the time that you get this, uh, Barry will have had his test to make sure he's okay, so we're praying that that'll be good for him and, uh, and, uh, and for all the folks over there, the uh, Carolina farmers, we certainly ask that uh, the Lord would touch all those folks. Most of them have fevers and, uh, and uh, body aches and stuff like that, as, as many of our people around. Uh, I was able to talk with Sandy McNeil, and Sandy is hoping that she will be able to come home and hopefully... Uh, by the time that all of you see this message, that uh, she will be at home. Uh, she told me today that they got her up, put her in a chair, and uh, she talked to me, and uh, she sounded a little short-winded, but, um, but she was doing much better, and the doctor said the medicines had all obviously helped her, and so uh, she's hoping to be at home by Christmas Day. And so, as you, as you know, in the way that we tape, uh, it, there's only so much we can do to disguise the time. As we tape this in the middle of the week, we're praying that God will allow her to be able to come home for Christmas. 
And um, I want you to remember uh, my niece. Uh, we certainly want to lift her up. She's battling COVID also at Green Valley Hospital, same place Sandy is at right now. And um, I called and checked on her a while ago, and she is doing uh, a little better. Um, they have her sitting up in a chair right now trying to get her used to breathing on her own a little bit more. Uh, she's on a high level of oxygen and uh, been a very sick girl, and so it will be some time before she'll be able to get out, and so continue to remember her. She's still uh, in a battle for that. Her name is Brooke Jenkins, and that, for those of you that are members at Balfour, she is my sister's daughter. She's my niece, and uh, uh Sherry that sits over here with the little baby, which is her grandbaby over here, is her daughter. And uh, so we certainly want to remember her. She's like an LPN at Alpine, and uh, she caught it over there, I guess, and then uh, has been a very sick person since then. So we certainly want to remember that. Um, normally on Wednesday night, we go through a complete entire list, but uh, God knows our list tonight, our prayer list that we have, and all the folks that we have that are struggling I uh, certainly want to remember the McNeils as they both uh, have dealt with COVID and are dealing with it, and we certainly want to lift them up. Uh, I know that we need to pray for Mark Strider. Mark has had a rough week, and, um, and uh, we just need to lift him up. As all of you know, he's battling brain cancer, and uh, it has not been a good week for him this week. And uh, so we need to pray for him that uh, the Lord would help with those headaches that he's got and, and uh with the workings of his legs, there's just a lot of things that are going on there, so we certainly want to lift them up. I uh, want to continue to lift up Betty Dyer. I went over to the house the other day, and we normally are not making many house visits, but Betty asked me to come to her house, and so I went by and spoke with her for uh, well over an hour and talked with her, and, and so continue to pray for her. She's asking that we lift her up. Uh, also got report that Lunette Ingo is doing some better. And uh, as all of you know, she's in the Alzheimer's unit there at Crossroad, but she's also had COVID-19, and so uh, she is doing some better. So we need to kind of continue to pray for them, not kind of, but continue to pray for them and lift them up, and uh, just pray that God would continue to bless. There's so many others, I look through the list here, uh, that certainly need our help and that have issues that are ongoing, and so we want to be mindful of those. But those are some of the most important ones that I can think of that's on my mind right now. Mark may have a name or two that comes up. Uh, it's hard for us to keep all this together because uh, just this past Sunday morning, what a lot of y'all don't realize is when a pastor, and Mark certainly knows it because we've talked about it and he's had it thrown at him like this, but a lot of times people have no idea, but you'll be trying to think about what you're going to preach about and what the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. And I got phone calls and, and all kinds of stuff that was fairly serious um, that, that are, are unspoken before the Lord right now that God will work that deals with one of the families in our church here. And we'll be praying that God will move in that. But hearing those sayings, it, it really diverts your mind, don't it, Mark? And it's, uh, it's almost a ploy sometimes that your people need to talk to the preacher, but it's almost a ploy sometimes that Satan used to distract you away from the message. And so I think all of you know what I'm talking about. And, and there is, um, you know, uh, it's a challenge. Um, I, I have literally, and this is before Mark got here, um, when I was handling both of it, there would be times that I would walk up here and have 20 different things written down that people had stopped me and gave me. And so all those things compete for what's in there. And so uh, it's a challenge. But there has never been a time. You know, I was a policeman for 31 years. And, uh, and had been involved in ministry uh, at a prior church as a Sunday school teacher and a deacon, uh, obviously being there and then at Crossroad at the retirement center, working with all those folks for five years. And I have never seen people as discouraged and beat down and depressed as they are right now. And so uh, we just need to really lift one another up. And if you can shine your light in somebody's life, if you can spend a little bit of time to call somebody or just tell them that you love them, and that God's, God's got them, then certainly um, I think it would be very beneficial and very helpful today. A lot of people are really struggling, and as I said, I got a call from Barry, and, and uh, he begged me to get you all to pray for him. And uh, so that's what we want to do. And uh, what we want to do is normal on Wednesday night. I realize this is not Wednesday night, and we, we don't necessarily go through the Acts prayer method. But uh, tonight I want us to be able to open up our service and I'm going to ask uh, Pastor Mark to join me up here at the pulpit. 
And as uh, normally he does on our supplications, I'm going to ask Mark to take us before the throne of grace and just praise the Lord and honor his name and ask for his presence to be with us tonight and to be with these many names that we have. You know, I have a list right here, as all of you had on Sunday, of names that are all vitally important. And, and before God, we give them to him. So tonight, Mark, lead us to the throne of grace. As we begin to pray, also remember Brother Tom Glass, who's recuperating from knee surgery, doing well. Brother Keith Eddins, I spoke with him the other day. Uh, his mom and dad's doing much better from the COVID. His grandfather that's in the nursing home, I think he's 105. Uh, hospice is being called in, doesn't have many days. And by the time this is shown, we're taping in the middle of the week, as Pastor said. You know, who knows? He could already be home with the Lord Jesus Christ. So, um, again, as Pastor said, there's so many people out here struggling in our world today. And they need Jesus. They need the love of God to shine forth. And this new year that we're about to embark upon this coming week, uh, everybody's so ready to get rid of 2020. But folks, the truth is tonight, and if you'll just listen to me, you at home, the truth is tonight, a new year doesn't change anything. But the Lord Jesus Christ can change everything in your life. Amen. He changed it yes. in my life, in my brothers' and sisters' lives that are here tonight. So I'm just asking you, instead of seeking on the things of this earth for you to find your peace and happiness and goodwill, I implore you tonight to cry out to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why we just celebrated Christmas two days ago. It's not about the presents, the gifts. It is, but it isn't. It's about a babe that came so long ago that you and I could have eternal Amen. life. So let's go before the throne of grace tonight. Father, we do thank you for the many blessings. And God, we glorify you tonight. As you came so long ago, as you uh, made the way, Lord, for sinners to be set free. And Lord, I know we're embarking on a new year here in just a few days. So God, I pray tonight that you would touch all these that are sick, all those with COVID, I think of Sandy, I think of Brooke, I think of those who have been made well, and we're so grateful for that. But Lord, they say there's a new strain, but God, none of this, none of it catches you off guard. Amen. So God, I just, again, I just beg with my brothers and sisters and those who don't know you yet, Lord, that they would fall upon their knees and cry out to the Holy God, the name above all names, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the Lord Jesus Christ. And God, you said that you would come, that you would bring peace that surpasses all understanding. Lord, you came to unleash the shackles of those who are bound in sin and yes. things of the world. God, yes, we Father. praise you for that tonight. Thank you, Jesus. But God, most of all, for that one that is watching this broadcast tonight, Lord, that's just stumbled by this, that may be thinking of suicide tonight. Oh, God, I pray that you would reach to their souls, the depths of their hearts tonight. Oh, God, I pray that they would, uh, that they would cry out to you, the holy God, yes. that can give life. Yes. And give it more abundantly. God, I pray for Balfour Baptist Church. I pray for the United States of America. They're talking about a new strain, but God, once again, you're in control of it all. So God, if we would just fix our eyes upon Jesus. And Lord, I just personally want to thank whoever gave Pastor Gary and myself these crosses. Thank you. What a wonderful Christmas gift. And God, also... To all our people here at Balfour Baptist Church. God continue to bless their homes. They've been so good to us. And been so blessing to myself and pastor. And so God we ask that you would continue to anoint and bless our people here at Balfour. And God for those who are watching Sunday in and Sunday out. That Lord that you would call them to here to Balfour. That God that Balfour Baptist Church would become their home church. Not because of us too but because of you. Because the truth is spoken here, the power of the Holy Ghost reigns in this house of God. Yes. God, we've seen people <clears throat> set free. We just had a baptism last Sunday by Brother George, and, and we thank God for that. And Lord, I just believe that you are moving in other people's lives tonight. 
That God, there may be some others want to make that commitment to baptism. Lord, maybe there's some who needs to get their life right before you, Father. And God, I pray that will happen. I pray for my brother, Mark Strider. Oh God, I ask that you touch his body once again. That Lord, that you'd build strength in those legs. That God, that you would keep this tumor at bay and that you would heal Brother Mark Strider. I pray for his precious family. God, you can do it. You can raise the dead off of their bed. So God, we're just trusting, believing. We're obeying you, Lord. We're in this house tonight to give you the glory, honor, and praise that you deserve. And Lord, as 2021 marches in, God, may our eyes be fixed to the eastern sky. Because one day this book says yes, sir. hallelujah. Yes, sir. Oh, Lord, I feel the Holy Ghost in this place tonight. That you're going to bust the clouds open and the trumpet call is going to sound. And hallelujah, Lord, those who are yours will be taken home. And God, we anticipate and wait for that to happen. Yes. Oh God, rain mercy and grace upon Grand us tonight, Lord. Lord. We beg you, we pray, Lord, that you would continue to help us. Lord, heal the sick. Help the ones that are unstable in life. Help the ones that need that touch, that needs the joy of the living God put back in their soul. Oh God, I pray for our pastor tonight. Oh, Lord, if you'll just anoint him once again. Oh, God, we thank you from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. God, that this word would come alive tonight. That it would rejuvenate our souls. That it would be something that we can grab hold of. And know that, God, it comes from your word. And it's your promise. And Lord, that we can understand and know that one day it's coming true. Yes. So we love you tonight, Lord Jesus. We thank you for coming so long ago. God, we thank you for salvation. We thank you for the forgiveness of sins. God, we thank you for the healing of the sick and raising people up once again in their darkest hour. May we go into this new year celebrating the Lord Jesus Christ. May it be a year that of plenty. May it be a year of rejoicing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God, we love you tonight. We thank you. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Remember, folks, Jesus loves you. He really does. Thank you, Brother Mark, and I certainly appreciate that. Tonight we're going to do, uh, uh, as I said, a little bit different type of message. Uh, what many of you may know and then some that are listening tonight may not understand is that uh, several years ago, probably about 15 years ago, uh, I did a series of, of lessons uh, based on Billy Graham's Heaven Answer book about questions that would be posed to him that he answered through Scripture. And I took that book and, and uh, have taught this in the Sunday school class and on top of that, for many of you that have been attending and listening to our Wednesday night services, um, I was able to walk through uh, some, some different uh, things about heaven prior to this. So now we're kind of kicking it into another level, and we're actually working on a, a situation now with Billy Graham and also David Jeremiah, some of the work that they have. And I've taken that and kind of combined that just a little bit. And so that's what we're going to do for the next few weeks. Uh, we'll mainly do that on Wednesdays. But tonight I just felt like that it would be easier today to continue this since uh, we've got such a busy Christmas schedule. Um, uh, we're taping this today, but then on Thursday we'll be doing our New Year's celebration. It'll be a time of communion. I'll be bringing a message on the incarnation, and so we'll be talking about Jesus. The whole focus will be upon Him, and, um, and we'll praise Him and honor Him and then go to the house and then... Of course, we come into the, the service this morning and was able to praise the Lord through the, the message and the songs that we have this day. So on tonight, just stay with me if you would. There's actually going to be a two-part message that we're going to put together, and, um, and we won't be here forever, I promise you. First of all, I ask you the question, is heaven a literal place, simply a state of mind, or is it a kind of dream? So is it a literal place, a state of mind, or a kind of dream? And I'm here to tell you today that heaven is a real place. It is not an imaginary world or a fantasy island in which to dwell. 
God created heaven with its vast array of authentic characteristics. Now, if you have your Bibles tonight, turn over for just a brief uh, scripture verse. I, I'm, I'm like a... I'm like a stallion, I'm ready to go, but uh, we don't have the outline up there. Genesis chapter 2, verse 1. Genesis 2, verse 1, it's a short verse, and, um, and it's, it basically says that all things God created. Now, in, in Genesis 2, 1, it says, Thus the heavens and the earth and all the host of them were finished. In other words, God created all things. Last night, my family loaded up in a van. I didn't get to go last night, but they loaded up and they went out down toward uh, the New Hope Way and uh, they sat there on the side of the road and watched uh, the, the Bethlehem Star, I guess you would call it, where Saturn and Jupiter are crossing over and it makes the emblem that is very similar to that star. And uh, it reminds us, wouldn't it be amazing that, you know, they talked about the Star of David that shone that night and, the, and that it, it just shone down there on Bethlehem when Jesus came into this world. What if that star was an emblem that is soon coming again? And that he's coming for his people. Now Jesus, upon his resurrection from the dead, when they crucified him on the cross and he was buried in that tomb, and upon his resurrection, um, did not ascend to a lawfully dream world, but returned to sit at the right hand of God according to the Word of God. Now, in Mark chapter 16, verse 19. If you have your Bibles, turn over to there. Mark 16, 19. And we'll, we'll be at several places today, but uh, I think we'll be better for it. In Mark chapter 16, verse 19, it says, So then, after the Lord had spoken to them... He was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. So the Bible tells us that Jesus took his rightful place at home in heaven. And you know, the interesting thing is that it really doesn't apply to this right here, but I think about, you know, what does it signify with Jesus taking a seat? It means that his work is finished. He has accomplished what God set out to do, that God through the person of Jesus Christ, came into this world, lived a perfect sinless life, and lived that life all the way up to Calvary when he gave himself as a sacrifice for each one of us, and that after 40 days, God allowed him to send back into heaven to where he sat down at the right hand of the Father. Now, in my Bible, the only place that I want us to be reminded of today is do you know the only time that it says that he stood up? is when Stephen was being killed for his faith. And if you remember that scripture verse, I got cold chills on me right now. It says as they were beginning to stone Stephen, and God allowed him to fall asleep, but the last thing that he saw is he saw Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. He was standing in honor of a man of God who gave his life. So heaven is a very real place, and it's where he's at. Now, when you think about Abraham, and, and if all of you would, turn over to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. And this will cause me to slow down just a little bit and allow y'all to keep time. I know what it's like trying to keep up with somebody that's moving fast. And, uh, but uh, I just get excited about this stuff, and so we'll, we'll, we'll catch back up here. Now, Abraham didn't cling to the promise of living in a state of mind. Abraham looked forward to a city with foundations whose architect and builder was God. That's what Abraham's vision was, and that's what he knew by faith was waiting for him. Now, in Hebrews chapter 10, uh, chapter 11, verse 10, it says, For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Well, that tells you right there it wasn't a dream world, was it? It wasn't a state of mind, but it was a literal place that he dreamed of. Now, look at verse 16. It says, but now they desire a better country that is a heavenly, wherefore God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath pre prepared for them a city. So I want you to understand today that for every lady that's in this building today, for every man that's in this building for all you men and women that are listening today at this Sunday night message, God has prepared you a place. 
that is more real than the place that I stand right here. That is real and waiting for all of us today. And then I'm reminded over in John chapter 14. If you would, go over to there. In a very famous chapter of God's Word. Oftentimes uh, we pastors read this at funerals. And many times all of us have, have read this. And I'm going to actually start beginning with verse 1. John chapter 14. It says, let not your heart be troubled. Let me just stop right there for just a minute. I made a request a while ago for us to remember people that are struggling. There's a lot of hearts today that are troubled today. All of us are strained. All of us are stretched. All of us sometimes, uh, we go around a lot of times at the office, but really we're telling the truth. Our nerves are about shot sometimes. And folks, I'm going to tell you something. You need to pray for your pastors because day after day after day after day, when you're dealing with people that have trouble, when you're dealing with people that are in the ditch or struggling, it pulls on you and it waits on your heart and it causes you to be troubled. And yet, I go to this passage and listen to what it says. Let not your heart be troubled. Brother Mark, that means me and you, we ought to not allow it to let us be troubled, but to keep inside the end game. And that is that we have a literal place that waits for us. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you. And I go to prepare a place for you. So that right there tells us that Jesus says he is preparing a place and it'll be ready for each one of us when we go home. And he said, I wouldn't told you that if it wasn't the truth. Verse 3, and it says, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Now, all of us here today know this, that all of us could hear the sound of the voice of God and the trumpet of God. If you can imagine that shofar, I believe that's what it'll be. It may be a trumpet, but I believe that horn will go and that our ears will hear it and we'll be called out of this world. And, and the Bible says we'll go home to a place, a far better country than where we're at right now. A place where he's at and that will be called out. But if it doesn't sound and if God for whatever reason says, I'm going to hold back the rapture. I'm going to hold back coming for my church. Then the Bible says then all of us will face death. And yet we know that the promise is, he said that where he is, that he's coming to get us. And I believe that when our loved ones who know Christ I believe that God dispatches angels down. I believe they take them by the hand and they lead them through the portal of glory to take them home. And that's what we've got to hold on to. Because he said, and if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Man, that's a promise. That's, that's an encouragement for all of us today. And this fourth verse. And this is the main verse that I had down. And whither I go, you know. And the way, you know. So here's the deal. If somebody were to come up today and say, Keith, I sure would love to have what you've got. Or I would love to know that I have heaven as a place that I'm going to. Well, according to that word right there, it says, we know where he's gone. And we know how to get there. That means that Donna has the ability or Glenda has the ability, and I know they do, that we all have the ability in here today to be able to lead somebody to Jesus, to be able to share our testimony, to be able to share what God has done for us, to be able to share the Word of God, which is unrefutable, but folks, to be able to point somebody to Jesus. Now, that place is heaven. And Christ is our Savior. He's there right now, and He's preparing for that day when we will all be there with Him. Then, the only GPS that can give you faultless direction is the gospel plan of salvation. Folks, that's what we all have to rely on. That's what I have to rely on as a born-again believer, is I have to believe that Jesus came, 
willingly died on that cross, shed his blood on that cross, rose again on that third day, and ascended to the right hand of the Father. And the Bible says that there is nothing in this world that can ever rob my salvation out of his hand. And that's the challenge that all of us have today. That's the gift that you were given. You have done nothing to earn it. You have done nothing to deserve it. If you want to think about it, and, and, you know, and I've got good friends in here today. I'm, a, I'm your pastor, but we're also friends in the Lord. And I love all of you. But the thing about it is, is none of us here deserve heaven. None of us have done anything to make ourselves worthy. But God loved us and gave us that gift of salvation. It is a free gift of God. None of us should boast about it because it ought to be all the glory goes to him for what he's accomplished for us. And with that, we're supposed to go and tell others. Now, Jesus said in John 14, 6, maybe you're still there in that chapter. He says, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. So, folks, that's the bottom line today. That's what's so unique about Christianity. That's what's so unique about the gospel is it clearly points out that the only way to God is through Jesus. That's the difference in our religion. Our God is alive. Our God died and yet rose again and is seated at the right hand of the Father. Our God is on the throne today. And that that is the only way that we can get to heaven. There's somebody in your life today that may need to know that. And you may, you may be the one that God has prepared. Maybe it's not the preacher. Maybe it's not Pastor Gary. Maybe it's not Pastor Mark. But maybe it's you. And you're the one that can share the love of God. Now, by nature, we all have a longing for home. I'll bet you that if I ask all of you here, Evelyn, if I ask you today, do you long sometimes for home? And I bet, I know in her head is shaking yes. But yes, we long for home. We kind of get homesick. I can remember when my mom and dad dropped me off in Georgia and I knew nobody. And they drove off and left me there and there I stood. And I got kind of homesick thinking already about wanting to go home. But folks, that's kind of how it's going to be for heaven except much greater is we think about that place. We think about that song, Beulah Land. I'm kind of homesick for a city. Folks, that city is real and it waits for us if we'll just stay the line. If we'll just walk the walk and we'll be faithful to him. So by nature, we long for that home. Far better than any dream you can imagine is the supernatural transformation that will take place for all of God's people when we get to our heavenly home. And my question would be simply this. Folks, will you be there? Has your name been written in the Lamb's book of life? I can look at these people here today and, and I just about can guarantee you that I know that they know. I can sense by the power of God that their name's on the book. But is your name written there? It must be. There is no other name under heaven whereby men must be saved. And so that's the only thing that matters today. Will you be there? Now the second question, the second part of our message today is this. Where is heaven? And is it often space somewhere? Now let's just talk about this for just a little while. If you would, go back over to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. And I'll, I'll turn back over there. If most of you have noticed by now in my preaching and everything that most of the time I have handwritten out the scripture on my notes so that I have them. But every once in a while, I could always mess up. So it's always good to go to the Word of God and read it. Genesis chapter 1, verses 6 through 8. The Bible tells us that God has set firmaments in the midst of the waters, divided the waters from water, and called the firmament heaven. Let's look what his word says, beginning with verse 6. And God said, let there be firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, as it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. 
And the evening and the morning were the second day. So there, there is an indication about heaven. First indications about it. The Hebrew word for that is fixed. Permanent means fixed. A fixed object. Firm or fixed. The Bible clearly says or defines heaven as a created place. In Isaiah 48, 13. Isaiah 48, 13. It says, Indeed my hand has laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand has stretched out the heavens, and when I call to them, they stand up together. So God here clearly has created all that we, we see and we read about and we imagine that's waiting for us. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. 1 Corinthians 2. Verse 9, it says, but as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. So folks, it's beyond and above what we can even imagine that God has done and created and has waiting for us, for those of us that will be faithful and make it to the end. I wonder today... I thought about this for my own life, and I challenge all of you today. I was praying this morning on my way to, to the cafe this morning. I usually go and drink coffee with some guys, and we sit there and talk about things above most of the time, and everything is, is, is just wonderful people, good Christian people. But on my way there this morning, I said, Lord, help me to finish well. I thought about the other day, you know, I said, I turned 65 years old. And now that I'm here, it don't seem like it's that old. I used to think 65 was old. And now I'm here, it don't feel that old. And yet I realize, according to the Word of God, I've already lived over three quarters of my life. Based on three score and ten years, which is 70. And there's some of you already that are said to uh, already be given those extra years that are beyond that. So it's something to think about. Five years... Keith, for you, it would be two more or something like that, one more, but we're pretty close. I guess the baby of the crowd will be Pastor Mark over here today, and he's getting closer, but time moves on for all of us, and yet I realize that as all of us live our lives, my prayer now is God help me to finish this race well. Help me to finish the cross and cross that line with my head held high, knowing that I've done everything I can for the kingdom of God. God, help me to preach the truth as a pastor. Help me to love on people, to encourage people, to fight spiritual warfare, to do all the things that need to do, to intercede in prayer for other people, and to do what, Lord, is right in your eyes as long as you give breath in my body. And I'll be the first one to tell you, I won't be a pastor all my life. I realize there'll come a time when it'll be more of a young man's game. And there'll be a time when I'll have to step back to be able to deal with all the stress and the pressure that comes from being at, the, at this level. And all of you understand that. I don't know when that'll be. But I, but I know that at some point, God will probably give me the green light to step back just a little bit. But I will never step back from preaching the truth of God's Word, never step back from standing for what God believes, nor should you in your life. So as we think about this heaven, may God help us to understand, Lord, help me to finish well. You know, one of the reasons I believe that God allowed me to go to Crossroad was to prepare me for here. When I came here, there was a lot of senior citizens here. And it helped me to understand people that have walked the walk for many years and been faithful. And down at Crossroad, there was many godly people that, that lived their lives and finished in front of me. And I was able to see their lives up close and personal, how to finish well. And folks, now I am brought to this place, soon be five full years here. And that now I am the pastor of this church. And my, and my charge to all of us today is may all of us finish well. May all of us be ready when our name is called. 
And to remember that we ain't even began to realize what God has prepared for all of us that will be found faithful to Him. So heaven certainly captured our attention when we first heard of it. When you think about a place that's beyond description, when you hear the songs that cause the hair on the back of your neck to rise and the chill bumps come on your arms, when you think about home, when you think, uh, I think about what was played Sunday, Oh Holy Night, there is no song that has ever been written, I don't think, that speaks to my heart any more than that song. It is a powerful song. I could hear it again, you know, when we do our, our service, and I always encourage them to play it. But folks, when we listen to those songs and the Spirit of God begins to speak to us, can you imagine what it's going to be like to be in heaven and be surrounded with the praise music and everything that will glorify God and the beauty that He has created? And yet, I, I want you to understand this, and I hope all of us can capture this today, is God is greater than heaven. Heaven is a created place. The thing that makes heaven heaven is God's going to be there. In 1 Kings 8, 27, it says the heavens could not contain him. As a matter of fact, let's just go over there and look at that. 1 Kings 8, 27. But will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain thee. How much less this house that I have built it. So even heaven itself will not be able to contain the power and the glory of holy God. Isn't it amazing that though the heavens can't contain him, he is willing to live in the hearts of each one of us today and love us. Do you realize how important you are today that God loves you enough that he came into this world to give his life for you? And it, it, ought, it ought to be an awesome thing for you to ponder on. In Isaiah 40, 12, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 12, it says simply this, Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? Measured heaven with a span and calculated the dust of the earth in a measure. Weighted the mountains on scales and the hills in a balance. Folks, do y'all realize how great God is? We think about, we sing that song about how good is our God. And we sing songs of praise to Him. I remember a psalm that we were taught when I went to a Christian college back in uh, the mid-70s. And one of the psalms that we had, we would sing it. Great is our God and greatly to be praised in the mountain of His holiness. And you could go on to be able to praise Him and honor Him for all the glory that He has. Do you imagine what it's saying here? Who's measured the waters in the hollows of His hand. That's an awfully big person when you think about the waters of this world. And it says that with a span calculated heaven, measured heaven, and calculated the dust of the earth in a measure. That's how big your God is. Weighted the mountains and scales and the hills in a balance. It's just a man's way of telling you that's how big God is in your life. Then what is being discouraged? What is being depressed? What is being financially strained? What is being stretched by this virus as compared to the holiness of God today? So we need to look to Him and trust Him as we move forward. In Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 and 16, it says, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by Him all things were created that are in heaven, that are on the earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones and dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through Him and for Him. So the bottom line is, is heaven is where God is. He is able to rule from heaven while also living within each one of our hearts today. That's the most wonderful thing I can think about. Our God expands this whole universe. The heavens cannot contain Him, and yet He chooses to live in this tiny woman's heart. And yet he chooses to live in this big man's heart. 
in this big man's heart and that big man's heart and you ladies' heart. I think that's so awesome to know that the Spirit of the living God lives inside of you. If you know Jesus tonight, if you've asked Him to come in, that's what the Word of God says. That He gives the Holy Spirit as a deposit in your life. And He gives you that seed of faith that once we get that seed, we're to allow it to grow and help develop our faith in order that we might honor Him and please Him with our life. And I wonder tonight, Are we allowing the spirit of the living God that does live inside of us? You know, sometimes I think about, Lord, what about all the times that I've said something, acted in a way, had a wrong attitude, all that, and I've got the holy presence of God inside of me. And it it brings shame into my life to think about how someday I will stand before him and thanks be to God that all my sins have been forgiven by the power of the blood. Do you realize how weak and anemic we are without him, without his love? Do you realize tonight what special gift you have inside of you? Because he loved you and he gave himself for you. So I want to challenge all of you today. That's what's so unique today is that we have the spirit of the living God that now lives inside of you. It is a gift that keeps on giving. It is a gift that you can never repay. There is nothing that I can say that will ever make me worthy. There's not enough messages that I can preach up here that will be enough to earn salvation. But it is a gift of God that for that picture that I showed many of you all ago about me when I was 13 years old, for whatever reason, that was just prior to me accepting Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Just a year or two before that, I had been baptized, but I didn't know what I did. I didn't really understand it until as a teenager, the Spirit of God got a hold of my heart and told me that you must be born again. You must know me. And I didn't know really what to do. I thank God for being at Oak Hurst Baptist Church. I thank God that I was down there around godly people and that I began to learn what it was about being in the house of God. I thank God that my grandmother took me to First Methodist Church in Franklinville as a little boy. And I learned those Bible songs in a Sunday school class that I still know to this day. And all of you know too. I thank God for all those experiences. But I thank God for that day at Pleasant Cross Christian Church. When that pastor gave that invitation and told a fictional story that, that, that I won't tell right now. But it was one that got my attention and helped me to realize That Jesus willingly laid his life down that I might live. And that day I went to that altar and cried out to God and asked him for his forgiveness. Folks, I wonder, do you remember the day that you did it? Could have been in a church. Could have been at home. Could have been like my wife. She was a little girl and listened to Billy Graham. Back in those days, all of us knew he was on TV all the time with his revivals and stuff. And she sat there and watched it as a little girl. And she went in there and asked her mother. She said, Mother, she said, I've asked and prayed that Jesus would come into my heart. She said, Can I write to them for them to write me back? And she said, Yes, you can. And that's where her walk with Christ started. It was how the gospel message got to a little girl living right back here off Old Liberty Road. And she was wondrously saved that day. What a powerful thing. The spoken word of God. And the gift of God that he gives to all of us. So God is everywhere. And God's with you today. God is in this place today. When we join up here uh, just a few days ago now. I, as all of you know, we're, we're a little ahead of time in our taping. And when we come into this place, I don't know if 20 people will be here. I don't know if 200 will be here. I have no idea. But I can't think of a better time to come to the house of God than on Christmas Eve with the lights dimmed down low, and, and, and hopefully the occasion be that we can focus on Jesus and we can focus on what He's doing. I already know that one song that's going to be sung is a powerful song, and it fits in on the incarnation when we talk about Jesus coming into this world for us, but that when we come together, not being intimidated by the devil, by this virus or anything else, but to be able to come in here, to take of the elements, and to be able to remember, Lord, this is your birthday. 
You know, we celebrate my birthday. We celebrate her birthday. And then hers next week. And we joked about that this past week. But folks, I got news for you. This Friday is when we celebrate his birthday. And so I want to challenge you. If you feel so bold as to come, I'd love to have you here. I want all of you to have your mask. Those of you that are listening, you're welcome to come. But I want us to have our mask on to be safe. We will remove them to take the elements. And I just believe that God can protect us to take the elements, don't you? And I just think, and so we'll be here. I already have one family that said they're going to probably bring four or five different visitors that will be with us in their family. They'll be coming. I think it'll be a powerful time. Folks, I believe that as we face this new year, not knowing what's ahead of us, not knowing what we'll fight, not knowing about the strands that may be out there, that may be coming, God only knows. With the financial calamity that could await, taxes increased, God only knows what we may face. But the last time I checked, he's still in control. And he lives inside of you. And he will fight your battles for you if you'll trust him. So I just want to encourage you today. The Lord Jesus loves you. And he really does. So heaven is where God is. He is able to rule from heaven while also living within your heart. So what is your concept of God this evening as we get ready to close? Especially as revealed in his son Jesus Christ. How do you view him as you move into the Christmas Eve celebration? He's obviously much more than um, we have a special song that will be sung, and, and, uh, and it, it's a very powerful song. But he's more than a baby, isn't he? It was God literally in the flesh that came for you and me. And he came knowing, and Sunday morning, is, and most of you have already heard this because we have, have done it on Sunday morning, but we'll read on Sunday about the life of Jesus as much as we know that is given in the book of Luke, about how he began to grow into a young man and got into the temple and all the things that there. He did all of it for you and I to move toward that time. So folks, what is your concept of God this morning? What is your concept of Jesus? What does he mean to you? And I pray that each one of you will take some time to be quiet with the Lord. And ask the Lord, Lord, what do you see in me? Lord, are you pleased with my life? Folks, I ask this for my own self. God, are you pleased with what I am doing as pastor at Balfour Baptist Church? Lord, is there more that I need to be doing? What is it that I need to be attuned to? And for each one of you, Lord, are you pleased with my life? And what is my, my concept of you? You see, for us to go into 2021, we must have a vision. We must pull together. But most importantly, it starts with each of us individually. We must have him alive in our hearts, in our lives. So don't limit his work in your life by underestimating him. Our God can do anything. And there is no problem that any of our people have today. There is no financial problem. There is no job strain. There is no type of relationship troubles. There is no virus. There is no sickness. There is no disease that God can overcome through the power of his blood. I just want to tell y'all, we brought this one lady down here and we prayed for her on Sunday. And we prayed that God would touch her body. She went to her test on Monday and she's completely clear. No cancer. God honored, I believe, that prayer. We prayed for another lady that their mother and dad had started visiting our church, been here for seven or eight weeks in a row now. And we lifted her up and prayed, and she had successful surgery on Monday, and the doctor felt like they got everything they needed to get done and that she's going to be just fine. Very serious surgery. Folks, God's still in control. What is it you need today? I've talked to some dear friends and certainly would never mention anything. People say, Pastor, I'm struggling financially right now. Not able to work like I normally have. It's not coming in and I don't know what to do. God knows how. And God will bless you. May God bless our faithfulness tonight. Maybe there's somebody that's listening to me tonight and just needs to be reminded of how much God loves you and that he's got you today if you'll just trust him. So folks, I just point you to him. And as we move toward 2021, 
May we move knowing that he is with us no matter what comes our way, that he will be with us. And we just might hear the trumpet of God. May we be ready. Would you bow with me in a word of prayer? Father, I thank you for this day and for this honor and privilege, Lord, to call on your name. You're a great and mighty God, Lord. And I speak for these people tonight that listen to you. Lord, we love you and we honor you. We praise you. And yet I'm reminded, oh God, that you have set me at this place to pronounce your name as the King of kings and the Lord of lords, the God of all, the God that even the heavens cannot contain. And yet, Lord, you have told us tonight that you can be small enough that you live inside of our heart. God, there is no sickness, no disease tonight, no problem, no trouble, no discouragement, no depression, no virus, no nothing that overshadows your power. So God, tonight we cry out to you. We ask you to help us to have a holy boldness to stand and proclaim your name. And we ask you tonight, Lord, to help us never lose sight of the fact that you're high and lifted up, that you're on the throne, and that, God, you have bid us to come to you. So, Lord, bless us now. Strengthen us. And Lord, help us as we leave this place this night, Lord, to be able to move forward to, to 2021. Lord, we don't know what's coming. Lord, we all have anticipation and anxiety and fear tries to sit in. God, just we pray right now that you take the fear away from us and help us, Lord, to put our faith and trust in you. Father, I pray for my church. I pray for Balfour Baptist. And I ask, God, your hand would be upon this church. God, protect us from the enemy. Protect us from the attacks of the enemy. And God, shield this virus away from us. Shield our families and strengthen them and protect them, Lord, I pray. And Father, I just believe in this, that you'll do it in Jesus' name. Amen. We hope you've enjoyed being with us today here at Balfour. Uh, I hope you've received the Word of God. It's our full intent to minister to you in Jesus' name. And I realize that these days that we're living in right now are trying for all of us and people are being stretched, but there is hope in the Word of God. And so our promise to you is that we will continue to, to share the Word and uh, pray that the Holy Spirit would speak to us and help us. And so I just wanted to say thank you for joining us. And if you have any prayer concerns or if you uh, need anything further that I can do or Pastor Mark can do, please feel free to call us here at Balfour, 336-672-0074. Uh, and we'll try to return your call and set up a time that we can sit down with you and talk with you. But again, thank you for being with us here at our church. May God bless you in a rich and wonderful way.